my name is uh, my name is Daniel. I work for Grand of London. I'm working with uh, House of Council to provide with my kind of engagement support service, which is what we're doing here today. Working with you guys to um, make sure that you're very, you're really well involved in these first initial stages of the regeneration process that's happening here on Bombay. What we're going to do here today. Um, as you know, if you've come along to the previous sessions, so the design competition is over a number of weeks and it involves a process where we start working with you, which is what we did the week before, in that in the workshop that you might have attended the, over the last couple of weeks, where we start asking you about your initial ideas and your initial thoughts and your initial feelings about on the way. All that information can be collected from that past workshop that's gone to. Uh, three architecture firms who are here today to present their initial ideas to you. During each presentation, they'll go through their, their initial ideas and thoughts based on the feedback you gave us. There'll then be a small uh, option after each presentation where they'll do a bit of feedback, a bit of questions and answers with you, and then finally at the end, we'll do a big question and answer session, big bit of questions with, in terms of the kind of overall regeneration with um, the and the regeneration team from Hansel. Also, around that same time, we will be working with members of the resident steering group specifically in order to work with you so that we can choose three representatives for the judging panel. That will happen, the judging panel will then happen on the 12th of October. So, we'll be working with you during that work session. We'll be doing a bit of capacity building so that you kind of understand what the kind of uh, roles and what the kind of um, uh, kind of time um, input you'll need if you want to be one of those three representatives and then what we'll be doing with you will be asking people to nominate themselves and if we've got more than three then we'll be doing a bit of a bit of voting and a bit of, a bit of selecting who the final three um, representatives will be. Yeah and the judging panel which is happening on the 12th will be a combination of those three residents that you pick and the combination of um, officers uh, in the council. Okay, so we're ready to start our presentation from our first uh, architect here today, and that is uh, Bell Phillips. Me. Uh, my name is Ashmi Thapa, I'm from Bell Phillips Architects, and uh, my colleague Alex is here today as well. Um, and we're both here to talk to you about um, our initial ideas and our response to your comments from the first workshop. So thank you so much for sharing all of those insights and taking the time to be here this morning. Um, I'm going to start, of course, by talking about who we are so that you can get to know us a little bit more. Um, Bell Phillips Architects was set up about 15 years ago by um, two of our directors, and we're currently about three, uh, 30 or so people now. And uh, we believe in working really collaboratively, both with the communities that we work with, with our clients, and um, with you, the residents who will eventually move into um, uh, hopefully a beautiful home that we've designed with you and um, that collaborative ethic is something that's really at the heart of our values as a practice and we both socialize together but we also uh, really try to make the process fun um, for everyone who's involved in it. Um, so what do we do, what's our experience? As a practice we started off working in, on an estate regeneration project in Newham and today we're now working with over half of London's boroughs and directly for the councils delivering social housing schemes. And we really believe in providing housing as being a really important part of our society and we're all really passionate about the design of homes for the future um, that are sustainable and, um, and inclusive. And here are some photographs of some of our previous projects. Um, where, you, where you can see residents who've moved into schemes that we designed collaboratively with them. And uh, this is our project Mark Lake Court and it's one of my favourite images um, because it shows the client, the contractor and the residents um, who worked with us together to design a scheme that they were really happy with. And um, one of the residents, there's a quote there um, which is difficult to read so I'm going to read it out for you. Um, they said it's been really exciting to be asked to take part in the design of the new building 
and we were actually listened to. And I think that for me summarises what we're about and what we'd like to really emphasise to you today, that we are here to really listen to you and learn from you about what kind of a home you'd like to live in at Convent Way. Um, so this is our team. Uh, my director, Tim Bell, isn't here at the moment, but hopefully he'll be joining us shortly for the Q&A session. Um, I'm a senior architect at Bell Phillips. I've been working here for about six years. And Alex is an architect who's also been with us for many years. And we both have lots of experience in designing housing and doing projects just like this. Um, and we're both really passionate about it. So um, yeah, hopefully we'll get the opportunity to work with you all more. So this next section is just about working with, um, working with you and the feedback that you've given us so far. Um, again, it's a bit difficult to read, so I'll read out some of the comments that came out of that first workshop that were identified as your key concerns. So lots of people talked about overcrowding and the possibility of improved, improved facilities. Um, you wanted a commitment to affordable homes and retaining secure tenancy. Um, you're worried about the rights of different leaseholders and the level of involvement you'll have in the design process and um, also about your safety throughout this process and hopefully today this has been um, organised so that we can be safe given the pandemic and um, there are also other safety concerns obviously with construction and we'd like to work with you to understand exactly how you'd like us to be engaging with you through this process and hopefully respond to all of these concerns as we develop proposals. And as I mentioned before, we believe in genuine transparent engagement. So that means being open and inclusive. Um, recording this event is a way to make this more accessible to other people. Um, being clear and transparent. And as I said, listening, not telling you what you want in your home. Um, and here's some images of previous ways in which we might work with you. And um, we like to make it really fun, as I mentioned at the beginning. So it will hopefully be interactive. We want to have events that will be attractive to young people, to children, um, to families, to single people, to the elderly. Um, and we want to meet everyone's needs. So the way that we do that is by making the process really interactive. We set up a website, we'll make models, we'll do presentations like this, but hopefully we'll also do walk arounds and workshops where we're actually making and drawing things together um, to really learn as much as we can about what it is that you want um, to see at Convent Way. And um, by doing that, we found it's that we get the most successful outcome. We get people who are moving into homes that they're actually really excited about moving into and really happy about. And we understand that it's a very difficult process. Obviously, you, you live here now, and it's quite hard to imagine what might happen in the future, and it must be quite daunting. So we want to make sure and reassure you that we are going to work really closely with you in that process. Um, so I'm going to hand over now to Alex, and he's going to present to you some first ideas for Convent Way that we've developed in response to the things that you said during the workshop. Thank you, Ashmi. Um, so I think on that last slide, one thing that came up was you said we did. So these initial ideas are us looking at the feedback we've had from you, on the, or not us personally, but that you've given already on the scheme and how we may throw out some initial ideas to start kind of welcoming your engagement in the project. So we've categorised four key aspirations for, the, for Convent Way and these are based off your feedback. So a home and a garden, a place that you can really call home, a place that actually you can identify with as being part of the design process. Greenery and ecology, that you've mentioned that there's some great green trees on the site. How do we keep those? How do we improve that? How do we improve your green spaces that maybe are under-designed at the moment and how do we make them safe? Health and security. So considering your health, in terms of your well-being in your internal environment, so your flat, how do we make that um, the best design space for your well-being, but also security in all these design spaces that are external, so they're overlooked with passive surveillance, so you feel safe, your children feel safe, and it, it creates a real community environment. So that brings me on to the final one, community, and one of the points that came out is in the feedback was that you've got a really diverse community. We want to understand that community, to start off with, we want to understand 
the key points of that community because we, we can't identify that without you telling us. So we feel that that's a really important element to maintain throughout the project because you may be concerned in the longevity of the scheme that community, you don't want it to be broken up, but you also want to build it and grow it and really kind of create an identity about your site. So the initial move we've suggested is that from your comments, improve landscape area of, for outdoor activities, more trees. They were your comments. So the first point, responding to your comments about improved landscape areas for outdoor activities, more trees. So if we improve the linear park that runs to the south and bring some of that greenery in, into um, the existing estate with three new parks, these arrows represent where there would be three new parks throughout the site. Then between those parks is about making neighbourhoods. You said residents know immediate neighbours and other neighbours in the building, but the overall sense of community isn't the same. That was one of your comments. So how do we create small neighbourhoods, small communities within the convent way? So four distinct communities, four neighbourhoods with a distinct um, character, a woodland neighbourhood. So using the landscape to create a real identity about that neighbourhood. So you can call that home. My home is the woodland neighbourhood within Covent Way. We may have an orchard neighbourhood, we may have a courtyard neighbourhood, and we may have a garden neighbourhood. So that you start through the external spaces having clear identities to create community and for you to call home. And then one of the other points, the estate is isolated. There isn't much on the estate other than local shops. So how do we connect that? You've got a clear route that runs all the way through, but how do we make that a safe space? Do we green the street, we put nice trees, we have level um, pedestrian dominant spaces that have a clearly uh, vehicle way, a cycle way and a pedestrian route to encourage cycle routes through the site. And we have traffic calming so that you don't get cars speeding through the site. Maybe where the free parks are, you bring a level surface through so it kind of slows the traffic so making it a safe environment for children if they're in the park for anyone as they walk around your new home. One of the other concerns to do with safety and security, safe and secure open spaces are important. So how do, how do we do that? So the free parks are overlooked by each neighbourhood distinctively providing passive surveillance but also along the along the main vehicle route through the site that we have clear sight lines so that no space is tucked away so that it's always overlooked by people as they uh, wander around the site or are in their homes. Also something I'll touch on later is that we're, put, we're suggesting that there's key activities at ground overlooking these spaces so there's a safe community feel about all the spaces we're creating. Another point was not enough bike storage so I've talked about encouraging cycling, having clear cycle lanes through the site, but we have to make that accessible for everyone. You have to provide the right storage. So the uh, correct amount of storage could be provided within the homes to encourage cycling through the site. Uh, one of the other key concerns that we felt came out of your feedback was what will happen to residents whilst the building is going on? So we're suggesting that there are four phases through the site. So each phase, delivers a neighbourhood and a park. So at the, in each phase, you are getting a start to each community. A community is not having to wait till the end of a development for a park to be delivered. You are getting a community and a park. But what's really important is building new homes before any demolition. So phase one has a sub-phase. So we could deliver a phase 1A in this location where the existing car park is. So no one has to move more than once and no, no one moves before any building work has, has happened. So we build a new, new homes on a site that has no homes, move people into that. So you only have to move once. You don't disturb a, uh, your community because it's important that that identity continues through and isn't lost during the building phase. One of the other points was no higher than uh, buildings that already exist on the site. So we can, we, we've, we can address that through mid-rise, smaller, um, smaller heights, stepping from four to 11 storeys, so no taller than the 
um, the existing estate and appreciating that the surrounding context is two stories. So stepping up on the northern side of four stories to 11 at a maximum, but a variety of heights to create um, clear identity to key areas, recreational and community. So within those spaces, we've got to then provide activity, provide a, um, uh, spaces that communities can build. So within the parks and playgrounds, we're suggesting that each individual park is a generous space for everyone. Um, it provides play space for young children um, and also we're really keen on trying to create active landscapes so maybe with outdoor gyms so that encourages everyone on the estate to live an active lifestyle. This means that there's multiple uses for different age groups that provide surveillance uh, to children but also create a really safe environment. One of the other things that came out was that play areas for children and adults. So we're looking at whether in the linear park to the south of the site, we could provide sports pitches so that adults and older children have a space to go to as well. You've mentioned a place for residents to plant and grow in. Each park could potentially have an allotment to the north. So this green marker here, here and here, so each park has an association to allotments, to growing, a place where uh, younger children cross over with older generations and they learn from one another about the food that they eat, the food that, grow, that is grown, the processes. It's about building communities in each of these spaces. And also, one of the other points was about uh, uh, barbecue spaces. So how can we provide outdoor spaces that facilitate that, allow communities to have events outdoor in these parks so this neighborhood and this neighborhood get together or the neighborhood the orchard neighborhood over here the people that know one another they've got a space to go to and build that community so communal gardens for residents to meet would be good so we've spoken quite a lot about free parks between the neighborhoods but it's also about creating a variety of space and these spaces within each neighborhood so this is your, this is your neighbourhood that may have little orchard gardens that um, adults can go and sit in, in in a quiet space, but also a space where they can sit and maybe observe their children running around. So it's about providing that variety so that all of um, your needs are fulfilled in the design. The courtyard garden may have that quieter space, um, but also it's about these spaces being practical things that you need to do in your everyday life, fix your bike, whatever it is, that that space is there for you outside of your flat and that you feel safe to do that. You mentioned that you need more community, event, uh, community events, play groups, and that this is fundamental on the community space that's provided. So we're, we're suggesting that what these spaces are, we, you can, can help us identify what you require, but these could be flexible spaces that could uh, facilitate multiple community groups. They could be dotted throughout the site, looking over the parks, looking over um, squares within neighbourhoods, so that it's not clustered in one area. We're forming activity and community throughout the site. These spaces could be co-working spaces for people to go and work in, if they're, rather than working directly from their flat, or um, they can go and work in these uh, co-working environments but also these neighbourhood squares so that they're active, they've got the co-working space filling onto it, but they've got the community hall that uh, has a party going on that bleeds out into the square. So everyone gets to be kind of, everyone's formed part of that community and it's really important that we understand from you what those spaces, that, the spaces that you require. So maybe there are some other spaces, this is the feedback we'd like to hear from you. Maybe there's a need for a nursery Maybe there's a need for different retail. And I've left a question mark there because we want to know from you what, what you, you really would like to see on your new estate. So Alex has just talked to you a little bit about a sort of wider vision for what could happen on Convent Way and introducing community spaces and 
green spaces into this, all, this very beautiful place which already has lots of green spaces but it could be celebrated more. I'm going to zoom in now and look at um, some of the comments that you gave us on that first workshop um, about a specific home and how we can maybe help to realise your vision for a future home that you might want to live in. And uh, we know that um, having, having choice is really important and feeling like you can choose between a different kind of home. Everyone has different needs and preferences, different types of families. And um, one of the comments that you said was that there are lots of residents who are living on the estate and it's already really overcrowded. And how are we going to deal with this? Um, so I understand that Hounslow are going to do a housing needs survey and we'll use that survey to understand your needs and turn them into hopefully a really beautiful home. And um, one of the first things that we'll do is um, look at a typical floor and a cluster of homes and how we can actually create a community that's really diverse and mixed and offer you all that choice within those homes. And we know from our experience of doing lots of projects like this that having a mixture of different sized homes on one, on one floor means that your community is always really mixed. You don't end up with a cluster of single people who feel isolated. You don't have lots of large families that are taking over a particular space and you get a really wonderful, diverse community that really reflects the kind of people who are here today, all of you. Um, so that's what we would try to do when we, when we design our um, initial layouts for a plan. And really that plan starts to then impact the sort of spaces that you have and the way that you connect to those lovely green spaces that Alex was describing earlier. Um, so one of the things that you talked about also on that note is that you like looking at green spaces and um, there should be a, a, a good a, a position where you can have lots of daylight in your home. And at Bell Phillips, all of our projects are 100% dual aspect, which means, this is a technical term, but it means that your home looks in two directions. And so as the sun moves, moves across the sky during the day, um, you experience light at all times. And it means that you have a really well ventilated home. You can open the window in different directions. You get lots of views. You feel really connected to your neighbors. And um, we know again from our experience that people move into these homes and feel like they're really bright and generous. And that's what we'd like to provide for you here um, to give you something that's better than what you might imagine is possible. Um, we also understand with choice that people have different preferences and needs within their home and their family. So um, it's quite difficult to see on the screen here, but we've shown a typical flat um, with an open plan living kitchen dining space. But what we'll do is design that flat in such a way that we could very easily also add a partition to separate the kitchen from the living room. So if you're a family that prefers to have a separate kitchen and keep the living space separate, we'll offer you that choice and diversity in the mixture of homes that we design so that you can choose a home that best suits your family. Some people like to be really open plan and we'll offer those homes for those individuals as well. And we know that there's a lot of demand on space. So we understand that also it's quite useful to have a flexible room. So again, in this flat layout that I've shown here, um, from the side of the living room, there is an extra room, which it could be a bedroom. Um, by introducing a generous sliding partition, you could open it up and then you have a much larger living space. Or it could be a workspace if someone's entrepreneurial, maybe you're setting up a business from home you could use that space next to your living area to actually have a home office. And we've all, or many of us, have experienced what it's like at the moment to work at home with your families um, or work in the same place where you're living. So having a bit of flexibility is really important in, in our future homes. And um, I think that's something that you've, you've also mentioned, that your existing homes are spacious, so you're worried about losing space. And that's something that we're going to um, really strive to retain as much as possible. Um, many people said that there weren't enough bathrooms, so we'll, we'll offer two bathrooms in all of our family homes so that you have the flexibility and, um, and the practicalities of, of the needs of a family. And um, also you said that you have good amounts of storage and there's a worry that you'll lose some of that storage in, in the new home, but 
we really believe that um, by having storage throughout the home, you can look after all of your belongings and, and we'll make sure that we've thought carefully about where you'll need storage and how to design that well. Um, and I mentioned also the possibility of a flexible home office space off the living room, but we'd also like to offer that space elsewhere. So in this flat in particular, um, we've created an additional space next to the entrance. So you have a really generous entrance space, but it also has a sliding partition. So you can, if you need to, separate that and create another home office. Um, and that home office could be linked to the bathroom and the bedroom. So again, thinking about the pandemic and perhaps the need to separate um, people who are using the home in a different way, um, we've tried to consider how we could actually provide you with that flexibility um, through the way that we design a home. And then of course, having private outdoor space, we'll make sure that every flat has a really generous balcony and hopefully you'll be looking at a beautiful green new park or an existing mature tree um, and, and that there's enough space there for you to have chairs, to have your children playing or to go and sit and read a book, uh, whatever you'd like to do and that it's got a really good connection to your living space as well. And finally, of course, we all know about the fact that we are currently living in a time of um, climate crisis and that we need to think about sustainability as a way of living. Um, but also there are lots of benefits in terms of health and well-being from living in a home that's really sustainable. And just down the road, we're currently de delivering six new housing projects for Ealing Council that are all zero carbon. And that means basically that your energy bills and your heating bills will be really low because we've designed it with renewable technologies, solar panels, and um, green roofs and we'll, we'll introduce lots of um, intelligent design to make sure that you don't actually have that heating demand but also that you get to live in a really sustainable healthy home. So finally we'd like to open up and hear your views. We've presented quite a lot of information to you this morning. Um, but we'd really like to use this opportunity to get your initial thoughts. Are there things that you liked? Are there things that you don't like about what we've talked about? And hopefully that will help us to, to refine our proposals further. And I'll also just introduce Tim. He's just got here. Well, Thank you. Yeah, Tim's our director, so um, he will also be involved in the project, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, so we're a company called KCNA Architects. Um, I personally am not an architect. I'm kind of the glue of the company. I do everything other than the architecture. I kind of keep everyone together and help out with things like this. So don't ask me any technical questions about the build process because I can't answer them. However, I can tell you that I'm here. My name is Julie. I'm here with Juliana, who is a very skilled architect, and Bo and they're going to tell you a lot more about um, their insights to, um, to this project. And we've also got um, our director, Kieran, couldn't be here today because he got back from a wedding in Austria. <laughs> so he's currently in quarantine. <laughs> this is what happens in the middle of a pandemic. But he has recorded um, a little video to say hello to you all because obviously, hopefully, further down the line, we hope to still be working with you and then you will know what he looks like, which is really important in all of this. Hi, my name is Kieran Curtis, and I can't be with you today because I'm self-isolating, but I do hope that at the next event, I can meet you all. Before I hand over to Julie, Bo, and Juliana to take the session forward, I would like to just briefly introduce to you KCNA Architects. We specialize in residential and mixed use schemes and over the last 20 plus years most of our work has been here in London. Our mission is to design better places for people to live, work and play in. So if you like we're the Mars bar of the design and architectural world. But we do try and design homes that are healthy and places that allow communities to thrive in. And we do this by engaging, as we are today, and listening in order to understand people's priorities and their needs. 
we also set very high design standards and designed to use resources as efficiently as possible. So to give you a feel for some of our work, we've brought along a booklet that we've prepared today that features two recent projects. We revisited these projects a couple of years after completion and interviewed the residents to find out their experience in living in their new homes. And as you see from the booklet, the feedback is quite positive, but we've learnt from those conversations and developed a number of insights for improving the homes that we design. And we'll be using those insights in taking the design for Convent Way forward and developing our proposals for that. So please do take a copy, or if you would prefer, we can give you a link to an online version. So I'll hand back to the team now and look forward to meeting you at the next event. Thank you. So from our group, it's lady groups here. So <laughs> <laughs> we talk kind of very kind of broad brush view how we would like to have our new home rebuilt, not thinking about only our generation, but also next generations, our kids. So we are thinking about how to have this place a much more better and safer place. So we look into um, various things that has come up with car parking. It's a space for the kids to go out. I'm, I will come back on the car parking again. So um, for the kids, the space the space to go out and they, um, they'll be able to look out so they can feel safe. Um, and also they think of like if the, um, the tower block is an option. So they would like to see that if any possible way to create a better home but not, in, not feel like living in a box again. Car parking, is this something that look also we, we were talking about? The thing that it sometimes is attracted by um, antisocial uh, anti behavior and misuse car parking. Is there any, way, any other way to manage this? We're thinking that if the car parking had been close to our home or the other way like underground car parking, for instance. Um, and then we come to, come to a little bit more that how, how do you think why we so, we would like to have a, a several place, place to be. We think of, we talk about Grenfell fear, this experience. That's why they, they say the tower block is something that we should be kind of considered quite a lot. And then this is very broad brush. And then we try to tap down into our home, how we would like to have your dream home to be. So one of the things is like, it's break down into, to, into elements, but then it's, it's very good to, to know because especially when you're in, during the, um, the COVID time, we spend more time in our home. So the balcony is come first, adequate space. So at least you have private outdoor space or we would like to see more of the um, private garden if you're gonna be live on the ground level. Um, the unity, uh, utility room for the washing machine, proper storage, separate um, kitchen, dining, living. No, um, one option is that some of us say maybe they, they don't like um, open space. So that's, that's one way to look into. And the, um, what else? We have malls here. Um, of course, uh, how do I miss this one? We have a request of two bathrooms. I think it's very good, it's very practical when you're living in a home with family, kids, and um, it's always busy going on. And... Um, do we have to rush? Will you have to rush? Okay, of course. Um, I think we've pretty much covered, but then of course the room layout should be adequate size, enough, big enough for you know we, you'll be able to rearrange your furniture or adapt or adapt the, um, your room, and of course one other last thing that's come up is the lift. So I think if I have I missed out any points, yeah I think we will pretty much cover. 
So this is a kind of broad brush and inside out. So I think this is a good way for us to really get, get us going because this is part of the community-led design and we know kind of inside out. Yeah, so this is from our group. Thank you. Quick. So um, we've, we've touched on a lot of things as well. So I won't go through all of them. I'll try to um, summarize it. But we talked a lot about the, the connection to, to outdoors, the, the, the open spaces, the uh, private spaces, outdoors, uh, allotments. And, and, and then we talked a lot about sustainability, which seems to be quite important because it's a reduction in cost. It's, it's, um, you know, it's the materials you use. Uh, it's flexibility of, of, for the future as well. And, um, and the, yeah, just the, the, that sort of feeling of living in some, somewhere nice that, that, that doesn't sort of destroy the environment. Um, we talked about, about usage, so utility rooms. Should it be open space? Uh, open plan space, should it be separate kitchen? And I think that we sort of, there was different, uh, different opinions, so maybe some flexibility there in the types uh, is, is a way to go forward. And, um, and yeah, so that's the comfort of, of the home as well. And, uh, like, so that's related to the open plan as well in terms of ventilation and, and just the thermal comfort of where you live. So it's not too cold, not, hot, not too cold and it doesn't smell. Um, so, and we uh, would sort of summarize that into a modern, inclusive, approachable, flexible, and sustainable home in an area that reflects the community. So I think that's something Kevin McLeod would have said on Grand Design about about a home, so I think I think we got we got there in the end. So that, that's very good. Um, as we go forward with this information, we'll come with some initial design concepts, and then we'll come back to you um, in an exhibition where it's sort of worked up, and and we'll have some some responses to the things you've said at previous workshop and, and this workshop, and then as from that. Uh, exhibition where there will be more comments, of course, we'll, we'll sort of detail it even further. Um, and, um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll present it in, in the very end, uh, um, hopefully picking up on everything that's been said, or at least taking it into account. Um, uh, yeah, so thank you very much for, for attending today. Yeah, hello everybody. Thank you for the opportunity to come and meet with you today and hear all your kind of really important views on, on your estate and what you think's you know, good about it and what we can build upon uh, to create a fantastic vision for you of a master plan. We're BPTW and LUC, architects and landscape designers. Uh, this, is, this is us, a wide range of people, diverse group of people, large practice based in London. We're specialists in housing in consultation, in regeneration and master planning. So this is something we've done a lot of over our 30 year history. Uh, I've personally had over 20 years experience in that field. Can everyone hear me okay? Just slightly louder, okay, thank you. Uh, and also working with LUC who are specialists in landscape. We've worked on many projects with LUC. And we find that the dynamic between two organizations all driving uh, ideas around a vision for landscape and homes sitting together building a community and really the importance of landscape increasingly as we're all aware with what's been going on recently and the health and well-being benefits of good landscape. Uh, this is LUC on one of their field trips uh, together as an office moving through. Uh, our specialism is working in communities across London and elsewhere uh, to consult with residents and, and, and people who who live and know their area in order to understand what the challenges are, what particular issues you may have, what the positives are of your community and the spaces that you know better than we do. So we really want to kind of feed off your passion for delivering something fantastic and we think this is a fantastic opportunity here. Uh, we've worked in Southwark and uh, Northern Boroughs, we're doing a lot of work in Hounslow at the moment as well so we know this kind of area. And the way we do this is 
th days like today where we get around the table, we actually speak and engage with, with as many people as possible. Obviously, there are challenges to doing that at the moment, but we, we're all working around that and uh, we look to make this a, an extremely positive experience for all of us. Uh, one of the projects of many that I've been involved with that I'll just touch on is Heathside and Lethbridge in Lewisham, uh, which was an estate regeneration, which is now in its sixth phase. So whilst we're master planning uh, here uh, to work with you, we understand the process of going from start to finish. And that experience will feed into the beginning to make sure that we get the best possible vision for you and your families, but that it's deliverable and buildable and can, can actually take effect. And the outcome of Heaside and Lethbridge was a lot of buildings such as these. Not high rise, medium rise, set around communal gardens, fantastic new homes that are affordable to heat and beautiful to live in. So, yeah, apologies for the interlude. Hello, I'm Neil, Neil Campbell. I'm, I'm also a partner of BPTW. Uh, I'm a master planner and an, and an architect. Uh, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about a few other um, projects that I've been involved with, which um, feel there's a real synergy in what we're embarking on here. Uh, Stockwell Estate in Lambeth um, was something we worked on for about seven or eight years. It's come to just the end of the process now, which was an estate regeneration project. Um, and what was really nice about this project is the and the sort of um, was the engagement of a, a, a very committed resident group, which I. I'm sure we're going to have here as well, not least the people in the room here already. And it's a relationship building process that, you know, starts really from today and ca carries on for, in this case, years. And, you know, that is all about trust and it's about um, establishing roles very clearly, but also uh, uh, enjoying the process. And this is something that was in incredibly rewarding for all of us, including the, the group and a very, very positive experience. I mean, what we're showing you here, for example, there's some, we had uh, the caricatures done and they, they ended up um, on, on the hoarding. It was all just a bit of a laugh, but it was just, it was such a lovely thing. Obviously that's what they, that was right for there. It, we've got different ideas about what right, might be right for here. Um, just uh, next one, please, Chris. And then the, the methods that we use there. So in this case, um, Stockwell Estate um, was about a regeneration in the end of over a thousand homes. Um, and it ended up being a hybrid uh, proposal, which means we kept some of the buildings and refurbished them, and then we built new ones as well. And so under, underpinning all of that is a landscape proposal that sort of knit, uh, knits it all together, which is why you know, we, we, we enjoy working with um, colleagues such as Katie here. Um, and the types of things we did to kind of really draw the engagement through that and around landscape in particular, illustrated here, enormous map that we will be able to just actually sit on and walk around almost and just, you know, put our ideas down on a very large sheet of paper. But standing there in the middle of the state with that looking and seeing, you know, not, not tucked away in a room, that's how we, you know, start to design and uh, make, make this place special to you. Just on to the next one, please. Um, another one I've been involved with is Retri Park in Ealing, so that's just down the road here. Um, this was a, 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 another estate regeneration that we had the... Uh, we were very lucky to be involved with right from the very, very beginning. So it was literally a blank sheet of paper, and we were part of the discussions with forming the, a resident group. Blank sheet of paper, what, what is this regeneration about? And, you know, going through all of those important steps very carefully along the way... Another one I've been involved with for probably eight years and again a, a very very committed resident leadership group that we were able to work with all the way along there and I think we can honestly say this was a resident designed master plan and we were commended by that. The Design Council Cave is, a, is, a, is a, a, a important to us, it won't be so much for you but in terms of the recognition that we, you know, that it was truly a result of the, of, of the consultation process and that is very very important to us. So we're coming here with a completely open mind. We want to start this process with you. And here's a few examples. You know, it's um, really, really well uh, turned. Uh, you, these events, you know, practically the whole estate came. It was brilliant uh, because there was activities for everyone to get involved with at all ages. Um, so, uh, again, a very engaging and enjoyable process for us. And, you know, just to illustrate what a master plan looks like in a way, that, that's what we drew before we... You know, at the, at, at the end of the sort of consultation process before we, you know, started the, the more technical part of building it. And this, this um, kind of design was, has similarities to here, really. There was a very large open space, which was in this case a park on, 
on, on the uh, west side. And um, as, as many houses, really, as, as we could uh, get to work in, in, in the right form, <coughs> because that was, very important to, uh, that was a very important thing for people who, who lived on the estate, along with gardens, those recognisable things, you know. But also with buildings and a careful consideration around height and view, another theme here, I think. So it, uh, it was a, um, we're very proud of this, and um, we're looking forward to the final piece of the jigsaw being completed. So I'll just hand over to Katie. My name's Katie Duff. Um, I'm from LUC and I'm a landscape architect. Um, and as Neil's already covered, we've worked very closely on numerous projects. Um, this one here on the display is uh, Rochester Riverside. So um, this is located on the River Medway in Kent. Um, we've worked closely with BPTW over the past five years to deliver a new community here at Rochester. Um, we initially undertook um, lots of community engagement. Um, we spoke to lots of local groups and people um, to find out what their aspirations were for, um, for the area. Um, and something key that came out of that was um, building a healthy setting in which the new community could live. Um, the development, once complete, is going to uh, provide 1,400 um, new dwellings um, and associated landscape um, with that and that's going to be delivered over six phases. Um, we're looking at phase one um, which has been completed um, and we've actually just run, won the Building for Healthy Life um, Award um, and that's been sponsored by the NHS. Okay. One of the key landscape elements um, that's been included in this project is a 2.5 kilometre riverside walk um, and this offers you know, like numerous activities uh, for the residents and for the wider community, um, so dog walking, cycling um, and we've also included along this um, route uh, breakout spaces, so we have playable spaces, green gyms, um, so you know, it really has provided a healthy, healthy setting for um, Rochester and, you know, being awarded this award has uh, demonstrated we've achieved that. Thanks. So, um, I mean, what we wanted to do today and appreciate that you have had two other workshops before this as well, so I hope there's still a bit of enthusiasm left, I'm sure there is. But we wanted to use this as an opportunity to engage with you in a workshop kind of style. Um, we've obviously had the benefit now of looking and seeing the output of the first workshop, which was um, very detailed, very helpful, and um, we've had a good review of that. And I mean, we recognise there's some really important themes that have come through from that quality of homes, what you like and don't like, um, security, parking, um, antisocial behaviour, um, links in and to the estate, and green spaces that you have. But one of the things that um, uh, that seems to underlie a lot of that is the, the idea of the landscape of this estate and how the buildings sit within the landscape. And one of the things that we, we're, we were struck by as we've come here now a couple of times is, is the landscape and the, the park setting and then the, the expanse of the views beyond and the golf course and what that potentially allows us to do. And Although we want, we want you to tell us a bit more about that, really, because I think we'd like to kind of have a, a theme of discussion, Chris, if you wouldn't mind moving on, um, just about the theme of shaping your landscape. Now, um, because it sits everywhere, landscape, and it, it, you know, it can come into the home, it can be part of you know, just your view, it can be part of how you move around you know, a, a wider neighbourhood, and then ultimately you know, the, the larger areas, such as a park, etc., too you know, use and enjoy and, and other community spaces. And I think the other, the other theme, it's become really, really important through this COVID kind of situation that we've all lived and worked through. Um, the the, the, out, the outside space, you know, that is sort of lacking often and the, the, the real need for that in the future and getting that right. Now, homes sit within it, and the, the homes we would also like to talk to you about, you know, but I think we would, we would like to sort of steer the conversation through a conversation about landscape to start with, if that's okay, because I think that's, we want to get as much out of today as we can, really. Um, so we've got a few things here. We've got um, three, three themes there. The idea of 
the, a, a new park and a community places. So those are kind of the larger spaces, perhaps the interaction across you know the, the whole estate and neighbourhood and community. Medium size, if you like, creating new streets and communal gardens. So those are the kind of spaces that perhaps belong to smaller blocks, uh, a cluster of houses, how those are used. And then a little bit further again in terms of scale, the idea of balconies and private external spaces. I know there was comments through workshop um, one about, you know, there's, there's in, in the flats, for example, you know, no, no or very few balconies and very small private spaces. And I think that's something, again, that we'd like to explore about how we can bring those thoughts into any proposals that we, we bring forward for you. So what I think we'll do to get, to get the most out of it is um, divide, divide in two, if that's okay. Uh, I don't, it probably naturally divides um, around that green, <laughs> green thing on the floor. And um, we're gonna have one, one group uh, led by myself and uh, my colleague Chris, and another group led by Andy and Katie. And we'll, we will, one of us, th this group here will um, uh, consider the idea of the larger spaces, so new park and community spaces. And this group over here will deal with the smaller ones, the idea of new streets, communal gardens and private spaces. And then we'll come back together just to kind of make sure that we don't, we obviously want to make sure that there is a bit of crossover of ideas about all of those things. But I think to get the most out of the session, we'd, we'd, we'd like to break it into smaller groups. So thanks for bearing with us and more group work, but I hope it can be an enjoyable session. So we'll come over there. But I think what came across strongly to us was that there is a lot of green space here and you enjoy the view onto it, but it's not doing what you want it to do. It's not focused enough around your needs and, uh, and you like some of the ideas you saw here as being appropriate to perhaps integrate. Uh, and create a more diverse range of uses on the, on the green spaces that suit a wider range of people and to think about how flexible uses could be made of, say, the, the ball area. Uh, another thing was the road is creating a disconnection between people's homes and the, the best part of the green space and how can we, uh, you know, as master planners, think about where that might go and how homes could be relocated to give a better connection with what is actually a, a fantastic amenity that you've got there. That's what struck us. Uh, you know, obviously creating new homes is paramount for us as master planners, but the unique opportunity that will make this absolutely exceptional and special is the landscape that's already here and how we can create, use that as a setting for, for kind of your community and the homes and the way that they integrate with that landscape. Uh, and I. Katie might have other things to add, but I think the other thing was the, uh, the amenities, the, the shops, the community space. How can we make that more than it is? Maybe a wider, larger uh, uh, shops or more variety. Uh, again, co-locate those things to create a little bit of a civic kind of centre, a little bit of a community around the shops, a square, because at the moment it's a car park really that you come out onto. So there's a real opportunity to kind of bring those to two things together to create a kind of where people are more likely to meet one another next to the bus stop it's the kind of heart of the estate if you like that's centered around amenities and, and community I, I don't uh, please uh, throw anything else in if i've not represented your views i think i just got one just making yeah, it yeah, sure. accessible for all very quick, but yes, just making the whole landscape area accessible for all. We had uh, discussions around uh, people with disabilities, um, so that's a key factor we need to uh, look at. So on over here, um, feel free to pitch in, Chris, but we, we were talking about the smaller spaces, so the idea of streets and community gardens. Although we did talk about the park as well, and I think some of the things that were kind of discussed over there sounds quite similar to the discussion we had here about the park being quite inaccessible, uh, the, the fence, etc., making it feel like it, it wasn't very easy to get in and out of. But in terms of the kind of um, spaces that we talked around, we talked around the idea of streets and, and front doors. Uh, we also had a discussion about what, what's here now and front doors, uh, uh, communal front doors and how many people go through that door. And then, you, and then you've got another one. 
but then you feel very uh, engaged with your neighbours, which is lovely. And that's one thing that's really important in terms of whatever we do, that that, that kind of feeling of community and knowing your neighbour remains. And how perhaps that might be, uh, we might think about that in a slightly different way, in a, in a street form perhaps, with, but you can have more opportunity to meet outside. So that was one, one, one thing. Um, we talked around uh, the idea of um, smaller spaces that could be shared around blocks and what might happen in them. Um, there was a really val valuable conversation about um, how they're maintained because it's, it's fine having lovely images of um, flowers and things, but who, who looks after them? And I think that's, that's something we need to get right at every level. So it, we don't want to create something that in two years' time just doesn't look as, as good as it should. So that's about being very careful about, you know, the types of plants and things that go in there. And we talked about play and where children play and um, the, the most used play area uh, across the estate, I think, was one that was overlooked by homes. So there was a feeling of security and so that you felt your children could play there really safely. And maybe the ones that were less well used in spaces that were left over and underused were ones that didn't have people looking over them. And again, that's something really important in a kind of design way that is that we have homes that look over everything. Um, we also talked about the idea of, of the view that it currently is here. And uh, we had a question answer that we were pondering is where, how high do you need to go in, in currently where uh, to see out? And it's about three stories, we think because um, um, the, on the third floor, you get to start to look across the trees in the golf course, so that's, that's great. And in a way that we talked about the kind of um, established um, park setting and green setting that there is, the view is there already, and we want to make sure that that is given to as many people as possible, because that, that's something that is really valuable that's here at the moment. And we had a conversation about balconies and how they could be used, and... Um, at the moment, I don't think there's any balconies in, in the flats, and there's some very small com communal spaces. Um, but the idea of having a balcony uh, uh, as an extension to your home, it could be really valuable and something that can definitely be incorporated into what we do here, um, because that could be about view and also just about being able to sit in, in a private space that is just, just belongs to you. And similarly, the idea of gardens and then we went on to have a conversation about, you know, um, scale and gardens versus how many homes we need to fit in, to put it like that. But, you know, that's the challenge that we're faced with. So we, you know, we as, as designers come across this and it's getting the balance right about between all of those things. Um, so I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Um, it's been very valuable and your input has been excellent. So we, we will take these ideas away. We had a little conversation here about what we what we do next, which is we're part of a design competition, and um, we go away and bring some of these thoughts together into a design proposal, and then come back and have have the opportunity, hopefully, to discuss it again. But that is just the start of the process, and some of the things we've shown you. So that is the the, the design and careful consideration of a, a whole master plan it takes a long time with a, with a lot of engagement, which you know we we would really look forward to. So thank you very much and um, look forward to seeing you again.